Hello everyone, welcome to SimRail. I've just loaded into the simulator. We're going to be doing a passenger run this week. Uh, we've got the EU-08 on the main line here. Um, we've just kind of run into a little bit of traffic, I think. I've got the uh, map pulled up on another monitor here. Um, so we've got... Uh, Looks like we're just going to be pulled over here for a minute. Not entirely sure why we're being pulled off to the side, but that's okay. Uh, looks like we're going to be slowing down to about 20 kilometers an hour, and then we'll get back up to our normal speeds. Uh, so that's something we're going to have to pay attention to. Get a little bit of uh, brake going. Just take a look at our train. Fairly new looking uh, passenger wagons. Just from a quick glance here. Pretty good looking uh, locomotive if I say so myself. Um, but we're just going to slow down a bit here, down to the 20. We come along in here. This is kind of the route that I used to run a lot before I got into the cargo runs. Um, especially with the... O7 and the O8. Uh, they were sort of what I spent most of my time driving. They're sort of what I would consider myself most familiar with, so that's kind of why I wanted to take them out on the rail today. Also, I was kind of looking at uh, what was available for cargo runs, and a lot of them had uh, posts that were 20-30 minutes long, and I said, I don't really want to be waiting 20-30 minutes for uh, a post. So decided against that. Hopefully this 20 km an hour limit is going to lift pretty soon. Um, we don't want to be going this slow too long. And there we're going to go back up to 60. It's interesting, I've been playing a lot of the ET-22 recently, so going back to the uh, 08, which plays very similarly, is a bit of an uh, interesting experience. Uh, and there's our full 140, so we'll get back up there. It's a very, it's a bit of an odd experience just going back and forth between the two. because they play so similarly, but uh, there are significant differences just with the number of uh, uh, throttle positions, the number of uh, non-resistant positions, you know, having that extra non-resistant position in the ET-22. Uh, it's a little bit, uh, plays with your mind a little bit, so. It's interesting to note just going back and forth between the two of them. And also sort of the difference in the weight between the uh, trains you're going to be running between the two lo two locomotives. Uh, where, you know, an ET-22 you're going to be pulling a 2,000 ton train versus here we're only 309 tons. So, big difference in that regard. So, you look at how far it took to get us up to the speed. It's only about one kilometer or so. 
And then, you know, if you think about braking, it's going to be a lot faster to brake in uh, the 08 versus the AT22. Just because you don't have as much momentum pulling you forward. So we're probably just going to do about 20-30 minutes of this run. We're probably not going to get all the way down to Katowice. I know that's probably not how you pronounce the city, but uh, I am not from Poland. I'm quite far from Poland, so you're going to have to forgive my pronunciation of Polish cities and various other Polish locations as uh, rather poor um, but I'm doing my best uh, if you have any suggestions on how to pronounce uh, Polish words then please leave them in the comment section I do my best to keep up with all of that um, This is the one that I probably enjoy the most, I would say. Uh, the EU07 is probably my favorite locomotive. I know I mentioned it a little bit uh, in last week's video, but just sort of getting to know me a little more. This is probably my favorite locomotive, the EU07 or EU08. I kind of consider them the same locomotive. The only difference between them really is the top speed with the uh, 08 being 20 kilometers an hour faster on the top speed. I think it's actually 15, but uh, in reality it's 20. Uh, you're not going to see a 07 operating at uh, 25 kilometers an hour, 125 kilometers an hour. Um, but as far as where I'm from, I'm from Canada, so pretty far away from Poland, to be perfectly honest. I've never been to Poland. I've been to a few places in Europe, but not Poland. Uh, would I go to Poland? For sure, but uh, that's not necessarily in the plans for now, so. Um, I am a university student, heading into my fourth year university studying in environmental studies so I'd say train simulators are kind of uh, interesting thing for me because I sort of see two perspectives on them there's sort of the you know oh they're just kind of this fun thing that I do but then also I see sort of this uh, perspective of, well, there, sort of the importance of uh, rail and what it can do for our environment and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, how, you know, the transportation sector is so damaging for our environment. And, uh, how rail has really come to be a very clean alternative to things like cars and planes and even boats, especially electric rail like they have in the game here. Um, now, it really comes down to what is powering that electric rail. If it's coal power plants, then that's not really much better than having a diesel locomotive. As we see, we've got a red uh, signal coming up here, so we're going to have to pile, up, pile on the brake. Pretty heavily, actually.
Interesting to see that we've got that bright aspect. Um, I guess we're just waiting on the uh, clearance to Zaverci. But it's okay, we're going to be able to make this red. Clean stop. Locomotive actually wants to stop. <laughs> that looks like we're going to get a clearance for about 20 kilometers now into about 20 kilometers an hour in. So we're just waiting for uh, I always get hesitant with these 20 km an hour signals just because I find by the time you get up to the next signal it's uh, going to be a green signal. You're almost better off just waiting at the uh, red for it to turn green. Or at least amber and give you the V max. Um, but, uh, The problem is if you sit idle too long on a signal, it starts to get mad at you and it might replace you with a bot, so uh, I guess it's it's kind of in for a uh, storm. Looks like there is a little bit of traffic, just checking my other monitor here. Um, There's another train here that doesn't seem to be moving. But uh, not sure what it's doing. Speaking of um, other trains, there's cargo one. It does look like we're a few minutes early, so perhaps we're just kind of throwing up the schedule a little bit. Um, just kind of mixing up the schedule a little bit. So that's okay. Um, not a big problem. Problem is also uh, visibility is not exactly the greatest right now, so you know you think about risk for uh, any possible collisions or not seeing a signal. It's a little higher now. So. But, uh, the nice thing about the multiplayer is that uh, while it does penalize you for running reds, which it should, it's not complete end of the world if you run a red, it's not going to kick you out of the locomotive, which, uh, you know, sometimes you're having a bad day, you know, you're a little tired, and you don't see that red until the last minute, which, these trains don't exactly stop too good. Now what is this? This is confusing me here. So it has let us up onto the back of this poor locomotive. And it's passenger wagons. This is something else. So that's why it kept us at the 20. Well, 
Alright, I'm gonna break here. I'm gonna pause the recording and I'm gonna come back once uh, I get a little bit of uh, clearance here. So I'll be back with you guys in a minute. Well, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know who I've upset here at Severci, but I've been waiting a while. And, uh, nobody seems to want to give me clearance. Um, I'm going to give it a few more minutes, but, uh, I've had a couple people behind me get clearance. Now there's, uh, you can see here this 40123 is actually behind me. It's going to be coming down this track here. You can see they've given him this yellow signal. But they don't seem to want to be giving me any signals here. So uh, not entirely sure who I've upset. You can see that's supposed to be me there, I guess. Um, but I thought, well, let's just uh, watch the sky come in together. It's pretty neat. It's always nice seeing uh, the other trains on the uh, tracks around here. It's one of the things I like about this game is uh, the amount of other trains that you see on the tracks around here. There's a Dragon 2, I think, I believe. And finally, we have our clearance. Truth be told, I was only ever going to get up to the bear chase, so... videos come in. Switch our radio over to. Oh, it's already upset at me. There we go. I always find it funny that it uh, tells me to switch the radio over when it hasn't even given me the, sig the sign yet. Uh, it's like I, I haven't even been told yet. How are you getting mad at me? But uh, that's okay. Can be pulling up to Zverechi. Prefer the low horn on uh, this locomotive than the high horn. And then once we stop in at Zverechi, that's I think that's where our, our hour uh, run is going to end. Obviously, this run goes all the way down to Katowice, but that's where we're going to end for now. You know, with these passenger runs, I always like to challenge myself and see if I can get within 50 meters of the break point. But since uh, Breakpoint and the uh, red aspect are the same. I think we're gonna 
not quite get so stuck in there. Fifty-seven meters. I'm happy with that. All right, that's where we're gonna end our run. I hope you've enjoyed this little run here. As you can see, only 190 points, but at this point, I'm so high up in the ranks, I'm not concerned about the points. Pretty well kept up with the speed limit. There you can see, big old wait time. That's okay. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.